The National Football League is back, ladies and gentlemen. And all your favorite teams are back as well, including the Dallas Cowboys, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Bears, the San Francisco 49ers, the Dirty Bird Atlanta Falcons, the Nolens Saints, and of course, the Oakland Raiders. Now the Las Vegas Raiders. But as you will hear in this upcoming episode, it matters none where a team is located or what their record is. Today's followers of sports team are a dangerous group of piranhas, as I call them, circling around fans of their opponent, especially when those fans are in small numbers. Fan behavior at NFL football games and sports in general is today's topic on the Fabulous Form Factor coming up next. Want to hear something fabulous, broadcast in a forum, and full of facts? Well, you've come to the right place. It's the Fabulous Forum Factor podcast with all its pizzazz. And now here's your host, Mr. Kenneth Moultrie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fabulous Forum Factor here on this Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. And I am your host, Mr. Kenneth Anthony Moultrie. And I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for all of your support. And I always, always kindly ask that you like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share this or any episode I produce of the Fabulous Forum Factor with your social media family. So ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about fan violence at NFL games, the National Football League. We are about two days out from the first game of the 2021-2022 season. They uh, started this some years ago, maybe 10 or 11 years ago, where where they now play Thursday night games as an opener Uh, into the traditional Sunday games and kind of like an appetizer for the weekend games. As you know, college football has Saturday locked up and the NFL uh, is on or on Sunday. So that's how it has always been. But like I said, you do have this Thursday night NFL game uh, that's going to be played and will be played uh, as well as college football sometimes throws in a Thursday or Friday day as an appetizer as well. But I'm here to talk about fan violence at NFL games. And I know you all have heard, you all have seen, and you all have probably wondered, like, what is going on? This this did not used to be like this back in the day, folks. I'm telling you, I've been going to NFL games long, long time ago. And I'm telling you, the mentality of the fan and their objective has changed. And some of the traditional things you do at a football game have not changed. But like I said, the crowd has changed. The world has changed. Society has changed. And how these individuals view their team has played into how these fights have occurred. Okay, so let me just take you into the start of of a football day. Now, whether it's college or pro, in most instances, a college football game or a pro game is going to begin with tailgating in the parking lot or tailgating in a tent outside the stadium. And... I've been to some kicking tailgate parties. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, where I've had just as much fun tailgating seven or eight hours before the game, if you get my drift, hmm, before the game actually started, as much fun as tailgating, as much fun as I had in the game. Lots of food. I love to cook. You know, I'm going to have an adult beverage here or there or three or four or six or seven. You know, I'm going to do my thing. So what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, at these football games 
is that people are getting lathered up before the game starts, right? And they're out in the parking lot. They're drinking. They're having a good time. They're throwing, a, they're throwing around the football, throwing around Frisbees. You know, they're mocking uh, 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 individuals who are wearing uh, the jersey or a hat of their opponent for that day or maybe an opponent for another day or maybe some an opponent that they're not uh, even going to play that season. But just because it's, an, it's not their team, they're going to have something to say. And then sometimes someone says the wrong thing or somebody's walking with their girlfriend or wife or significant other, other and something comes down the pipe. And, you know, here comes a fight in the parking lot before the game even starts, before they even get into the stadium. Now, I will say this. I am a much bigger fan of college football than I am pro football. I am a bigger fan of the atmosphere and the pageantry that is college football. And I can tell you this right now, ladies and gentlemen, I went to an Oakland Raiders game about four or five years ago when the New Orleans Saints were in town. And some of my relatives who actually live in the state of Louisiana they actually came out specifically for that game. So we planned that we were going to, you know, get together. We tailgated in the parking lot, which was surprisingly good. Uh, uh, Oakland Raiders tailgate. There was no trouble. I was surprised. But, you know, once we got into the stadium, all the trouble started. And did it start? Now, I remember this particular uh, time in the stadium to where after each quarter, a message was put on the marquee board telling everyone to stand up and shake hands with your neighbor, just like in church. Uh, you know, to, but you know, in church, you don't have to keep the peace. Well, I guess sometimes you don't, but for the most part in church, it's just a fellowship thing. But at the Raiders game, I had never seen this in any other game before they made, or they instructed everyone to stand up and shake your neighbor's hand. So four or five neighbors, just to keep the peace because Raiders fans are notorious hoodlums. They are. I'm not talking about every single Raiders fan. I'm probably not even talking about half the Raiders fans, but it doesn't matter if I'm not talking about half or all. It's enough of them. They're like a gang and they're not the only ones. And football is really not the only sport, ladies and gentlemen. So at that game, it was just so much vulgar language. There was a, uh, an attractive journalist or news reporter walking uh, the sideline, and I was sitting down kind of like in the first or second row from the field, and these guys were giving her the business about, you know, who, what did she do to get that job, and, you know, her dress was too short, and she did, and just whatever they can muster up to get some laughs, to kind of, you know, whatever that beer and that alcohol was doing to them, it just, it, it was awful. And when I, matter of fact, I left at halftime because I'm a guy and I couldn't even take it, right? So I just, when all this stuff I was hearing, ladies and gentlemen, it just made me, I said at halftime, I don't care how good the game is. I don't care how close the game is. I don't care if my cousins, who I'd already, you know, been together, we tailgated. And like I said, we, we had a couple of days before that at another relative's house where we just ate out and, and had fun. So I had already spent the time with them. I wasn't worried about that because I was getting back in my car and driving back to Southern California immediately after I left that game. And I left that game at halftime. I made up my mind after that game that I would probably, in all likelihood, never, ever go to an, an NFL game again unless I was out of town or you know traveling somewhere and there happened to be a game when I was there or maybe just something that just maybe comes upon me uh, a few years down the line I may but I am definitely never going to a Raiders game I don't care if the game is in Las Vegas Oakland uh, uh, San Francisco I don't care where the Raiders are playing I am done so I'm telling you that it starts with the tailgating. And like I said, I am all for tailgating, but I'm just giving you an origin of how this happens. Now, did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the mentality of the sports 
fan today is hinging on the gang mentality, G-A-N-G, the gang mentality. How do I know that? How do I explain that? One, because of the colors, okay? Gangs are really enamored and they are fixated and they are have this type of origin about colors, blue, black, red, you know the colors, right? So they have adopted, officially adopted teams with certain colors that when they wear these particular colors, they're not fans of that particular team. They're, fan, they're, they're trying to promote a symbol or symbols of the gang that they belong to. Sports fans today are about turf. When they're talking about our, our, our house, our turf, our land. What does that sound like to you, right? Sounds like gang members to me, right? The element has changed. People have associated uh, uh, getting with a sports team and latching on to a team, not for their athletic ability on the field or on the basketball court. They're latching on to them because it's a family. It's a gang and that's what they are, uh, that's what they like to portray. And it's also bragging rights. All these things are contingent upon the activities of gang members. Did you also know, ladies and gentlemen, that they are that there, there are a number of teams in the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, Major League Baseball college football and college basketball, even hockey, even hockey. Now these people are not into hockey, but like I said, they have adopted these particular acronyms and they've turned it into their own little special uh, uh, message uh, uh, for their own playground. Let me give you a few examples. The Raiders, I don't care where they play. They're the Raiders. That's why they have a Raider Nation. Back in the day, they were not calling fans nation. Fan is short for fanatic. I get it. But when you say nation, you're talking like this is some type of mafia. This is some type of, you know, untouchables with Elliot Nest or something like that, you know. And you look at the Raiders and the acronym for one of the gangs who adopt the Raiders is not... Listen closely because I'm going to read this acronym. So the R stands for ruthless. The A is and. The I is insane. Disciples eliminating red slobs. Ruthless and insane disciples eliminating red slobs. That is what the Raiders stand for, the acronym in certain gang cultures. So they're putting on this Raiders hat. And they're not talking about Fred Blanitnikoff or, or Ken Stabler or, or, or anyone like that. They're not talking about Raiders. They're talking about their own little game. Okay? The New Orleans Saints, slobs ain't important, now terminate slobs. That is the acronym for the Saints. UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. More prevalent in basketball have they been than they are been in football, but still UNLV, it's the same makeup. Okay, UNLV. Now listen to this. Now I can't say the second word in here, and it starts with an N. So use your imagination. But us N word love violence. Okay, us N word with an S on the end of it. Love violence, UNLV. So when somebody puts on a UNLV cap, they're not rooting for Grandmama Larry Johnson or Stacey Augman or, or Greg Anthony, you know, UNLV basketball fame or Randall Cunningham. They are N-words who love violence. The Orlando Magic of the National Basketball Association, the NBA, 